What's up everyone, it's your boy Norrenrad89 here bringing you another video today continuing our Nightmare on Elm Street review series as now we are on to part 6, Freddy's Dead from 1991 and yes you can hear the tone of my voice, It's we're already in for it with this one. I thought maybe my ideas or my views might change, I've rewatched this film a few times, like this is probably I want to say, oh probably the 15th? 15th or 16th time I've seen this movie. So it's I've given this film many watches, but today you're going to hear the plethora of negatives that have to go along with Freddy's Dead and the very minuscule, minuscule amount of positives that I have for you. So let's do this. Roll it. So Freddy's Dead, man, 91. Yes, I just think... This was not a good start for Freddy Krueger in the 90s, that's for sure. Nightmare on Elm Street Part 6. But let's talk about a couple positives right away before we get on to all the negatives that have to go along with this movie. A couple positives. This film did make more money than Part 5. We got to talk about that. Nightmare on Elm Street franchise is one of those franchises that as, as every film came out, the, the previous film, all, or the new film, always made more film than its predecessor. Another positive with this film is that this one introduces or tries to introduce the concept, an interesting concept that I think is not done, that does not execute it right, but I think it's an interesting concept that they talk about or introduce in this film but I just don't think it, it's executed correctly. So let's get into the rest of the stuff right now into the many negatives with this film. And my main negative with this one is that tonally wise, this does not feel anything like the previous Nightmare on Elm Street films. I'm talking about this is like full-blown campy comedy, but it doesn't really land right because why? It's in 91. And 91 was on the cusp, yes, of being in the 80s and 90s. You're still on that, like, on the era where you're kind of in the 80s a little bit. But no, we were at this time now where we were not into campy stuff. That was kind of dying out with the 80s, and we were going into a different direction in the 90s and stuff like that. Some more subtextual stuff, some more like street stuff, that just more down-to-earth kind of things, and this film does not take that route. Another negative we have with this film is, oh man, our main character, or one of our lead characters, John Doe, who's played by Sean Greenblatt, and then we also have another main character, Maggie Burroughs, or Dr. Maggie Burroughs in here. Them two are our two leads, and whoa, they are atrocious. I'm talking about atrocious in acting. In terms of acting on screen, they are probably two of the worst leads that I've ever seen in an actual horror film. Like, they are really god awful. I'm talking about line delivery, chemistry, everything. It is all off. There is nothing to offer here from either of these two. So that's a really huge negative with this film is that the two leads, your co-leads in this film, just are complete trash and have no chemistry and the just, oh, it's so cringy how bad some of these lines are delivered and everything. I'm his son. Oh yes, John. Other negatives I have with this one is just the graphics and the CGI and all the practical effects. Everything looks worse than the previous films, which is crazy because like I said, this one came out in 91. So when you watch like part two, Freddy's Revenge or part three, Dream Warriors, the graphics look so much better than this film. And this film is like seven years in the future. So that makes no sense to me how the graphics are worse. And like I said, this film's pulling in more money than its predecessor. And you weren't able to splurge a few million on Freddy, you know, New Line. The house that Freddy built, you couldn't splurge some money on part six and let them have some better CGI or better practical effects. Come on, guys. Even Freddy Krueger is a letdown in this film, which is sad to say. Robert England tries his best. Robert England really does, I think, try to deliver some kind of character stuff in this one. We actually get Robert England outside of the costume a lot in this film as well, too. That's very interesting. But yeah, I just don't think even he, what he's able to do, like the limited amount amount of stuff that he's able to do with the character that they gave him in this film to do you know what they gave the background and the story because we learned some things in this film that Freddy Krueger has a daughter that he had a relationship a loving wife and pretending to be a family man you know what I mean strangled his wife you know and then his daughter saw it. like all these things happened so they're revealed in this film so like I said that was part of the concept idea I was talking about in my positives I liked what they introduced with this film 
and that idea. And they really had something there, but just the execution was very piss poor. Another negative I have with this film is the kills. Like the kills are really just nothing. There's nothing in this film that offers you like uh, anything that all the previous films have done better. That's what's like, that's why when I watch this one, and I've talked to people in the horror community that don't have this at the bottom of their Nightmare on Elm Street film. And when I talk to those people or I see their ranking, I'm always like, it's one of those movies that I'm like, did we watch the same movie? You know, did we sit down and we watch the same movie? It could be, you know, somebody watched it under different circumstances or maybe they got introduced to this film first. That's why it holds more of a special place in their heart. But yeah, Freddy's dead after returning to it, like I said, this 15th or 16th time. No, it, this 15th, 16th watch did not save this film at all. And also when we get into our third act, the chaos and what transpires and ensues and stuff, where we end up finding out we have John Doe, who's kind of like our red herring. Like, he's like, I'm, I'm Freddy's son. He's after me. I'm the long lost child. Like, oh. And then we get, you know, the reveal that it's actually Maggie Burroughs and she's the daughter and all this stuff. So it's just like the twist doesn't really mean anything because it's kind of like already seen. Like you kind of already see it coming. You know what I mean? So it doesn't really mean anything. And this is kind of like weird because this film's supposed to be set 10 years in the future. So it's not even supposed to be 91. It's actually technically supposed to be 2001 if you think about it from when this movie where time wise what this is supposed to be taking place. And it just... Yeah, it, it, this film doesn't make any fucking sense. In our third act, how we end up dropping and ending Freddy, how, you know, freaking, oh, we get his daughter getting into the fight with him, having to use the 3D goggles to go into the dream to pull Freddy out and everything, and then having Tracy help out, you know, Carlos, Spencer, and Tracy, who are probably some of the weakest side characters that we've ever had in a Freddy film. Tracy survives kind of at the end and ends up tossing a pipe bomb to Maggie Burroughs, and she shoves it inside Freddy, and yeah kills him and everything like literally a pipe bomb we destroy him with that and are able to destroy the three demons who are responsible for resurrecting freddy so yeah this this film is like I said it's out there it's nothing like the previous films and it's just really it was just them trying to i think like I said keep the rights make more money keep the new line cinema, you know, the Freddy Krueger money train rolling. That's really all this film was there for. So as you can tell by my feelings, my thoughts, and all my comments so far, this is not a film that I enjoy, which is kind of funny that I've seen it double digit times, but I just, I love the Freddy franchise. I really do like the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. I love Freddy Krueger and all of the films in the franchise I've seen 10 plus times. Every single one of the films in this franchise. So, like I said, I'm just a slasher fanatic. These are the films that pull me back in. These are the ones that I'm going to rewatch, even if you find out the rating. Like I said, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 6, Freddy's Dead, is going to get a rating of a 2.5 out of 10. Yes, a 2.5 out of 10. And I've seen this film double digit times. So, like I said, you know, uh, some people, it's just that weird stuff. You know, some people, maybe I'm just crazy. I keep rewatching the film, expecting something different. But like I said, I'm such a slasher fanatic, such a fan of the Freddy Krueger character and like Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers that I rewatch even their awful films. I rewatch many, many times. But thanks for sticking around with me all as we chatted. Freddy's dead. These are just my thoughts and my opinions on the film. Please let me know down below in the comments section what are your thoughts on this film because I know there are some people out there in the horror community that do enjoy this film. So hit me up in the comments. Let me know what are the positives. Why do you return to Freddy's dead and why do you love it? So we can discuss down below. I would love to hear from you all. But please like the video. That definitely helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and have that notification bell poke so you're notified anytime I post a video. But most most importantly, you all know what's up. Have a safe and happy day. Peace out.